Welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. On behalf of the Youth and Landscapes Initiative and the Global Landscapes Forum, we are so happy to have you from all the nooks and corners of the world. My name is Oindrila, and I'm very grateful to be holding the space for the first youth daily show of the day. This session is a collaboration between Youth and Landscapes Initiative and the International Forestry Students Association, IFSA. IFSA is a globally organized and locally operated students body that aims to foster education and capacity building in the field of forestry, environmental science and allied subjects to create a world that appreciates forests. Today we tune in to connect to nature. Nature is not just about colorful flowers and beautiful animals. Every single being is connected with us in an intricate web of life. Nature is a source of livelihood for people. Nature provides healthy environments, inspires cultures, and nurtures well-being of the communities. Our forests and our diversity, our power diversity, are one of the major foundations of the human nature relationship. We are here today to explore together how young people from different cultures in a highly digitized world of today connect with nature and especially how we can reconnect back to our roots and create a world in harmony with nature. I would like to invite all of you to add your questions in the chat room, since we will have time to address some of them towards the end of the session. Before inviting our speakers on stage, I would love to show you a short video prepared by IFSA on how biodiversity shapes young people's lives around the world. Nature is the guiding light of every soul on earth. Its effect is omnipresent, especially on our inherent cultures. Let's hear the tales of how nature nurtured the life of youngsters from distant corners around the globe. सामा चकेबा पाबनी के समय हिमालय पर्वत सब प्रत्येक वर्ष नवंबर मास के आयल पक्ष सब का भगवान स्वरूप मानी का उनका सुरक्षा प्रदान करे अच्छी लॉकडाउन के काल में उत्तर बिहार के सीतामढ़ी जिला सिंगवाहिनी गांव से तीन दशक बाद हिमालय पर्वत का दिखल गई ये घटना बहुत अच्छी ही बताबे ल कि मनुष्य प्रकृति के कतई क्षति पहुंचने अच्छी हाय माय नेम इज इमानुएल बोलवा गुड I am the representative of the Northern African region, IFSA. Biodiversity has been a very great importance to the people living in this community. The fishes and water creatures that are found in this ocean has been a source of livelihood for the fishermen in this area. And this in return generates revenue to the members of this community. Hi, I am Nur Maulidina from IPB University Indonesia. Saya akan menceritakan masyarakat di sekitar kawasan Taman Nasional Kepulauan Seribu, Jakarta. Mereka telah menyadari adanya abrasi di pulau mereka. Oleh karena itu, masyarakat bersama pihak luar melakukan penanaman mangrove untuk menjadi pemencah ombak dan mencegah abrasi. Karena kelestarian ekosistem mangrove juga berdampak sindikan terhadap kelangsungan hidup masyarakat. Hola, mi nombre es Stephanie. En Costa Rica la biodiversidad es sumamente importante. De hecho, gran parte de nuestros habitantes dependen de los recursos naturales para subsistir. Esto ha hecho que a nivel país tengamos metas que van dirigidas hacia la sostenibilidad ambiental, pero con el fin también de dinamizar lo que es la economía y respetar los aspectos culturales en torno a los recursos naturales. Por eso, para nosotros es sumamente importante que las nuevas generaciones tengan esta perspectiva y quieran hacer cosas eh, buenas para pues, proteger y mantener la biodiversidad. Aún tenemos mucho que hacer. Marked by the mighty Danube and its wetland forest, home for countless living beings, amongst which the Viennese cherish the vine the most. 
the woods offer refuge from the busy city hustle, as well as a hideout for secret lovers. Also, they let us breathe in the historic center of Vienna, for it is the trees that show us what it means to stand tall and grow through all that will come at us when we least expect it. Wow, such an amazing tour around the globe. Let us now welcome and introduce our speakers of today's Youth Daily Show without being late. Tisha Ramadhani, a forestry graduate from Indonesia. She is working as a community relations officer at the Fair Ventures Social Forestry, where she collaborates with indigenous people on community development and relations and welcome Alex Onatumji from Nigeria, the official for IFSA IUFRO Joint Task Force on Forest Education. He is a young leader in the forestry sector in Nigeria and a vocal advisor for green spaces in industrial landscapes. Welcome Tisha, welcome Alex. Hi everyone. First of all, as this session is about connecting with nature, let me ask both of you, how do you connect with nature? Do you have a favorite place where you go? What is your way to feel the bond with nature and why is that? We would come to you, Tisha, first. Okay, I feel most connected with nature when I swim in the river. I trust the river very much nowadays because it's harder in here to find a nice clean river due to the illegal mining that happened everywhere in central Kalimantan, which polluted our river. Every time I swim in the river, I feel like I'm in peace and all my problems are gone away. I think it may be come from my roots where my ancestors used to live in the river and we do all our livelihood in the river. Thank you. Wow, river brings life in you. What about you, Alex? Oh, thank you very much, Andrea. And in my case, I connect with nature by looking at the pictures of trees, sometimes hugging them. Then I've um, been good to find myself in places where there are a lot of trees. That's my own way of connecting with nature. Wow, that's nice. Forests are home to you. Wonderful, and I'm very curious about our wonderful audience. Everyone, please go to slido.com, insert the code GLF Biodiversity, capital G, capital L, capital F, capital B of Biodiversity. Go, go on youth and let us know what is your favorite way to tune in with nature. As our audience fills in their uh, way of tuning with nature, I'd like to ask you a question, Alex. You are an educator. Do you see a difference between how young people nowadays are connected with nature and the way you or the previous generations used to connect with nature? And if so, why do you see the difference? And what has changed? Oh, thank you very much. Um, the way the other, gener uh, other generations connect with nature are quite uh, different because with the use of technology, the younger generation can connect with the nature more easily. For example, uh, for example, with IVR technology, we can go on virtual tours into a forest and enjoy the same nature as going there face to face, which the other generation do. Then also uh, with careful urban planning and such as urban forestry, young people and new generation of people can connect with nature more easily than the other generation. 
okay uh, it's a very nice insight from you that how things have changed i have a question to you tisha as i like say that the change in lifestyle has uh, changed this looking towards nature you have been working for quite some time with dayak indigenous people of kalimantan can you share more about how they connect with nature and whether this relationship is changing or changed over the time yes from my observation uh, the youth usually move where from the village to get a higher education as early as junior high school age that's not only separate them uh, from the village life but also the way they connect from nature because they have to move to the city at very young age a close friend of mine told me a story that when she was young they used to spend most of their time in the forest or in the river playing around they don't even need to buy toys or go to a very expensive place to have a place to play but now uh, by the year, young people already lost their forest no more clean river around i think they're starting to disconnect from the nature they have less and less relationship with nature after they go back from the tv at the age they're ready for working mostly they will work at in illegal mining or even illegal logging around the village with not only bring harm to the environment but also put them more in at distance with the nature and i think they don't have a choice or another option to do for livelihood and that is one of the problem why we are getting far away from the nature that's a nice insight from both of you that uh, today's lifestyle has disconnected huge from nature but what about our audience today how they are connecting to nature or feeling about it let's see the replies they sent in slido oh we see here forests mountains hiking nature meditation this nice is that we are still connected towards the forests our mountains i should think uh, like we should go move and uh, mm-hmm. see how youth is watching uh, towards connection with nature more uh, we are seeing nature and uh, biodiversity loss in today's world how do you feel alex that the different communities around the world connect with nature and whether nature their uh, relationship has a negative or positive influence on the way they manage their natural resources and biodiversity and why do you feel that Oh thank you very much. Uh the way uh biodiversity is been uh connected to human being as both positive and negative side. For example, uh, the advent of COVID-19 make us to understand that we need to uh, listen to nature and treat biodiversity very well otherwise things may go out of control. Then all uh, also on the positive side there are quite a lot of benefits that are getting from biodiversity from nature from the food we eat to the air we breathe to the water we drink these are some of the things which uh influences the way we use the natural resources and biodiversity that's my thought cool that you are thinking that our way of life is influencing our biodiversity and what do you feel tisha about this yeah i quite agree with alex that our connection with the uh, nature will impact on how we think and act towards it and i can see it from people around me when they are more disconnected from nature they feel less related to it and they tend to impact the way they are uh, manage it or even uh, do activity around it for example in here uh, the yacht not uh, not anymore do a lot of things in the forest or in the river and they feel less connected and after that they manage the 
natural resource differently from older people who have more connection into the forest, for example. Uh, they will try to harvest as much as possible so they can get more money, for example. Uh, but in older people, they understand that if they take a lot of things from the forest, the forest may not be as same as before and it couldn't super help them in the long run. And I think that is why it's very important for us to feel connected and in touch with the nether around us so we can relate and understand the connection of uh, the condition of the nature and we can act toward it by the real situation. I think that's for me. Oh, yeah, true. Uh, what I want to know from both of you, like you both say that our lifestyles, our choices are impacting our nature adversely these days. And we can see our biodiversity, our landscapes changing around the world. Do you think uh, that these changes of biodiversity loss, destruction of landscapes, affect the physical and mental well-being of us, the humans, the people living in those landscapes? And uh, if you feel so, please bring out examples from your own areas and uh, represent here. Isha, to you. Okay, I will take uh, the example from where I live in central Kalimantan with Dayak people. Dayak people are known for giving so much with the river because they build their village around the river. So when you want to find a Dayak village, you can just come close to the river and you will easily find them. But they used to use it for the main transportation channel, source of food and the source of clean water. But in the last 10 to 15 years, it has changed very much. Illegal mining and all sorts of activity have followed to the river, and now they cannot depend so much on the river anymore. Now the river color has changed into a very muddy color. It's, you cannot see my fish anymore in there. You cannot catch any fish in there anymore, so they lose their source of food the source of clean water and the only uh, person or generation that flying in the river is like very small children. They're still swimming in the river, but the other people around is not uh, longer using the river the way they used to. And we can see these children starting to get some kind of skin disease from my observation. It might stop when they come uh, older. There's, uh, have some kind of immunity after that, but I see a lot of children in the village that have some kind of skin disease because they're playing a lot on the river. So I think the way that uh, environment change, the never change will affect us by our, even if we do it conscious or unconscious, that is funny. Alex, so Tisha felt that uh, the people there living have grown out of the nature they are dependent on and now they are very rarely connected to the nature and the adverse effect of nature might have an adverse effect of the young people in the communities. What do you feel uh, about the places you have worked on and your experiences? Oh, thank you very much. Um, when it comes to the earth, physical and mental well-being of students and young people in a society, the usefulness of trees and um, good landscapes really matter. For example, uh, when there are good number of nature around, it can increase the lifespan or life expectancy of a society, unlike where there are no nature. And uh, the mental well-being of people, because um, there's a lot of stress going on in the city, going on in urban area, stress from noise, from pollution, and all the rest. And uh, with biodiversity, we can relieve some of this stress, which accumulates to our mental health. So in, in a nutshell, biodiversity uh, affects our physical and mental health. Fine. Uh, both of you and Tisha are coming from a rural background and you have grown with biodiversity very closely and now have moved to urbanized areas. And many young people like you all around the world do the same. 
how do you feel that urbanization affects one's relationship with nature and the well-being? Tisha, how do you feel? Yeah, I feel when I move into more like bigger city, more urban, urban area, I feel a little bit more disconnect from the nature. I'm not really fancy the tall buildings uh, with the concrete and everything because it uh, make me forget where I come from. And in a bigger city with a more hectic life, it's harder to remember uh, where you come from, where your roots, and being grateful for everything you have. So, but also uh, by thinking that way, I can be more grateful when I go back into small villages because I know exactly what I miss when I move into urban area. And I think uh, it teach me a lot of things by uh, moving from a very contrast place and it make me more grateful uh, and it teach me how I can act towards the nature better now and in the future. That's good, that's good that you have uh, understood that mm -hmm. from your life. Uh, what do you feel, Alex? You have moved from Africa to a new city here in Europe and how do you feel about that? Uh, thank you very much. Um, um, gracefully or um, fortunately, I'm in Spain, which I have about um, 30 to 50 percent forest cover. Then um, the city is well planned in such that there are a lot of trees on the streets and by the buildings. So this makes me connect back to nature and to see that things can really go on and in and. And I mean both biodiversity and urban development. Thank you. So, you. so you both feel that the green spaces in urban areas remind you of your roots and connect you back. How do you feel about the digitized technologies today? How they're changing the relationship of our with nature? Are they all negative or there is a positive side of it as well? I'll come to you, Alex, first. Okay, I take uh, some of the positive side. For example, I am in Leda today speaking from Spain, and you are speaking all the way from India. And the advantage is that um, with um, technology, we can come closer, then forge a common uh, way or solution to biodiversity loss and um, green landscapes. And so with this, uh, this is a meeting point for us to discuss and to chat uh, a good part, not just for the present, but also for the future. That is the positive side of technology. I don't have to travel so many miles, and now we have called on our carbon uh, uh, sequestration or the carbon emit, uh, emissions from our travel by having this meeting virtually. That is the positive side. Tisha, how do you feel about the digitized world connecting to nature? Yeah, of course, I think there is a positive and negative side. I like to share a very nice uh, point of positive side. I think uh, there's also the negative side of technology that could affect not only us, but especially indigenous people. In the past, they're quite safe from all the globalization and modernization because it's hard to come to the village in such a remote area, like it's so far away from the city and everything. But right now with technology and there is internet everywhere, people starting to know what have really happened in the village and a lot of people may come and trying to explore, no, explore, like manipulate and use them for their own benefits. So there is a lot of way that technology could also bring negative impact for indigenous people, especially. But I think the one who choose it is uh, us as the user. We can we can bridge it from, as a young people, we can bridge how 
that technology mm -hmm. could help more people, especially the indigenous people and the people with uh, less knowledge about it. And I think that's one of the most important thing with technology is how we are going to use it, how we uh, utilize it. Is it we're going to utilize it for the nice thing or like for the bad thing? Yeah, Tisha and Alex, you have both brought out the important, most important points that as young people today, we should be responsible on showing the world how responsibly technology can be used to connect together and build back better for a better world. Uh, we have a few good questions from uh, our audiences. I'll come to you, Tisha, first. Uh, what is the biggest challenge you have faced as a young woman working in the environmental sector? And how did you overcome it? Very briefly, Tisha. Okay. I think especially in Indonesia where patriarchy and sexist is still one of the biggest problems. So I have to overcome that on my daily life while also working in a very uh, hard condition. Like the road is bad. I have to drive a motorcycle by myself. So yeah, that is the reality that I'm facing every day. Alex, uh, we have heard from Tisha her challenges and we congratulate her for her great work. And now I come to you. You are an educator, Alex, and we have a question to you. Do you think uh, it is enough to educate young people on these issues of biodiversity, nature, and connection with nature? Or should we aim to educate the older generation equally? Um, for me, uh, our, target to, our target is to both create awareness for both the young and the old generation. The young generation may be much in population, but the older generation are usually those in charge of power and those who make the decision even for the young people. So it is nice if we can uh, create equal opportunity of awareness for both generations. To conclude, I would like to ask you one last question. In one sentence, tell us, what do you think is the role of us young leaders like you too, to support other youth to connect with nature? To you, Alex. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, our role is um, very good. We can um, connect to nature, invite our friends, create social media awareness, and tell people about how our life is intertwined to biodiversity and to green landscapes. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Tutisha. We are uh, we are the pioneers, and we are will also inspire the whole world with our spirit. I think how that your people should do. Thank you so much, uh, our speakers, for your uh, insightful session insightful knowledge. And I'd like to say that from the session, uh, we understood that how we should look inside uh, ourselves, introspect, connect towards our rules and use as young people use technology and intergenerational collaboration to build a world, better world back together. And it is our responsibility to use the technology, the upcoming technology as well, the better part of it. Thank you so much. To all of you, thank you, our audience, for this uh, event. Uh, I hope you would feel inspired to reflect on the way you connect with nature and give yourself some time to find that connection. So after today and after the conference, we hope you will find some time to go to your favorite nature spot and connect with your local nature. The Youth Daily Show would be back this afternoon at 1430 CET with an episode on monoculture. You really don't want to miss this one out. Thank you everyone. And now sit back and enjoy a short documentary by the Patagonia Films, The Refuge, with, which invites you to explore the cultural and ecological importance of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge and learn about the current threats posed by plans of oil and gas extraction. And you can also join and connect to our speakers through the VOVA app. They are available. Connect and use the VOVA app. Stay online and enjoy the 
conference. Thank you so much.